Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, we have some NFT news and updates and I'm generally just gonna go through a load of NFT pieces that I'm interested in and just sharing with you my thoughts on the market right now. A week in this market is literally like multiple months in the real world. The rate at which the valuations are going up is absolutely mind bending. I'm gonna show you one today that I am kicking myself that I did not go hard into. Um, just ridiculous stuff. In the space of one week, you could make three, four, five X your money. As easy as that. So if you're keen to learn some more about the NFT space, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like today's video, turn on the post notifications as well, as all the content nowadays is really time sensitive. So the big news this week is that big funds in the crypto space, your Alameda's, your Three Arrows Capital, are now allocating big amounts of money to the NFT sector. So wow, it looks like Alameda Research is aping into Artblock's curated pieces. Nice job creating the FOMO, Vincent Vando and Kyle116, that's Kyle from Three Arrows. We'll go into this news in just a second, but down here, someone actually sniped their address. So let's jump into their Ether wallet here. You can see they bought a 326 ETH Fidenza already and a 68 ETH Subscape from Artblocks. This is their wallet. Casual 212 Ethereum balance, and then they've got a shared load of tokens in here. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see their ERC721 tokens. They've actually bought one Lonely Alien Space Club, 13 MeBits. I'm not sure what that one is. They've got seven art blocks in here and a variety of other things, including a Crypto Punk. Or in fact, it looks like they've actually got 11 Crypto Punks here. So Alameda's wallet looking rather chunky here with some big additions. So Sam Bankman-Fried and the Alameda team following the footsteps of Three Arrows. Now Vincent Van Do, this is like a famous art collector within the NFT space. He's launched an NFT fund with 3AC and they plan to raise $100 million. So what does this mean? Well, it means that these guys are coming in and they're aping a shed load of NFTs. Rare ones, ones with historical context, the ones that have got cache around them like art blocks, they're just gobbling them up for big prices. And this is why the floors have been skyrocketing over the last few weeks. We've also heard talks of billionaire Chinese businessmen also getting into the NFT sector in a big way and just buying up the most expensive things. And so the opportunity to make big multiples on your investments is definitely here in these Ethereum NFTs. There are, of course, a lot of other things going on on different blockchains, your Solanas, etc. It's so hard to actually concentrate on one thing at a time. So I think the best thing is if you're into your ETH stuff, you're into OpenSea, just concentrate on that for now. As we can see, there's just a huge amount of money flowing into this space. So this fund, dubbed Starry Night Capital, has been set up in collaboration between Three Arrows, Suzu and Carl Davis, and then this guy, Vincent Van Do. And he only joined Twitter last month and has already got 25,000 followers. They plan to raise $100 million. Their thesis is simple. We believe the best way to gain exposure to the cultural paradigm shift being ushered in by NFTs is owning the top pieces for the most desired sets. And so a part of its plans looks to launch a physical gallery in a major city by the end of this year. So this is a paradigm shift. We've gone from NFT collectors just being casual people, you and me buying these pieces, looking to speculate on them, maybe having some ones we really like and holding them. And this is probably the culture that's been around for the last 12 months. But over the last couple of months, at least, you're seeing big players step into the space. Whilst there is a lot of alpha to be had, many of these things are essentially mispriced. There's a lot of market inefficiencies right now, and they're scooping up these desired sets, as they call them. So maybe not a bad idea to look through their wallets, see what they're collecting, and try and follow suit. Now, many of these things now, Fidenzas, for example, are hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase. But within these sets themselves, so Artblocks now holds a real major brand recognition. So buying up maybe the cheapest pieces in the Artblocks curated sets and hoping that floor price goes up and up and up is probably not a bad way to look at it. So over on Twitter, we're seeing people post things like this, the NFT sector, we are literally here, about to go parabolic even more. Big dog put, yep, everyone's mind's about to be blown. Three arrows teaming up with the biggest art blocks ape and Alameda start buying today. Yeah, I'm sure the top is in, lol. So many people saying there's just so many top signals in the market right now. But when we look at what's actually happening, you're seeing basketball players like Steph Curry buy up board apes this week. The effect that having major celebrities 
Talk about NFTs all the time now just means there's a huge wave of normies entering into the space. More entrance is just going to push up the prices overall. So whilst everything does feel very euphoric, you've just got to recognize we are very early to a new cultural shift here with NFTs. So at the start of this month, this was on the August the 9th, we looked at Fluff Worlds. Now this one, Fluff World, has been doing, you know, not too bad in terms of the fact it had a huge launch went up to like a couple of ETH per fluff. Everyone was super hyped about this and it kind of went up too fast, too soon and then corrected. But now since the price has come down, they've actually started to implement a lot of new things and features that are coming soon. And so rather than paying two ETH or more, which people were paying at the start of this month, the floor price is now down to around 0.8 Ethereum. So the cheapest ones here around 0 0.78, 0 0.79, 0 0.79 and then we're into 0.8 down here. Um, quite a bit of fluffs for sale here under the one ethereum price point and many of these people as well are actually starting to maybe take a haircut so this guy bought it for 1.29 and is willing to sell at 0.8 now the reason i bring this up is the fact that there are opportunities in the market with already established projects these seem to go in waves of you know peaking out and then having big pullbacks kind of like you see in altcoins but these peaks and troughs happen so much more quickly it's like everything is on fast forward in this industry. There's going to be a breeding mechanism coming out for these. So this means that having a fluff is going to allow you to breed more fluffs, which is pretty damn cool. And then yesterday, catching up with this chat from Ledger Status with the Fluff World guys, they started to talk about where the roadmap is going to go next. So they started to mention things like renting NFTs, having your NFT operate in games in the metaverse and generating yield for you, and actually being able to play the game whilst you're not physically using it so there's definitely DeFi elements coming to the fluff world team and so just catching up with a project like this listening to an hour's podcast you can gain a little bit of alpha in the market and maybe some of these people who are looking to sell these off now at these floor prices may come kick themselves at a later date when these things start to roll out so this is one to maybe have on your radar it's gone through its peak out it's gone through its euphoria stage and is now seeing better pricing yes it is still two thousand five hundred dollars but comparative to where it was i don't think this is the worst of entries now an upcoming project to have your eyes on because it looks super cool is mechaverse here dcl blocker covered this in a video just yesterday these guys have literally just put this twitter page together i've just done a few teasers and i've already got twenty two thousand followers here Go and join their Discord for more news and announcement. There's going to be 8,888 of these unique mecha characters. And as you can see from the artwork there, this is something that people are just going to totally geek out to. These just look super, super cool. So it'll be awesome to try and get your hands on some of these when they do mint. Come and check them out over on Twitter. You can see this is going to be a very hyped launch once this goes live but this is a mint i will try to participate in looking at the upcoming nft sales here on rarity tools if you just scan through them my kind of uh, way of screening what i don't like and what i like is literally just doing this just scroll 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 and just see if something actually jumps out at you most of them just don't do much for me at all but now and again you'll just come across one and it'll jump off the page and that is always a good signal for one that may be worth trying to mint now, one of the ones that will probably do very well here is Meta Hero Universe. But for this one, you required to have the Mint Pass, so a previously sold NFT. These Meta Hero guys uh, have a lot of stuff going on and a massive community. Um, so this one, I think, will do well and might be one to try and pick up on the secondary market on OpenSea once these are all minted. Punkscomic.com is the website for that. In terms of these other ones down here, there is one coming soon that I posted in our Patreon group and a few of the guys are going to get involved with, but I'm not going to tell you what that is because obviously it isn't the most beneficial to shout about what you want to go and mint as you know there's going to be a huge gas war. But jump into the Patreon, link down below if you want to get involved with one I think that's going to do very well. Then last week I just gave you like a pick of the week. I said these Mike Tysons looked quite undervalued. And Jesus Christ, was I right? These have shot up in valuation and I wish I had bought a load of these last week. So in just seven days, these Mike Tyson NFTs have gone from a floor price of 0.96 ETH to 4.79 Ethereum. 
That is over $12,000, probably more in price jump in seven days for an NFT collection. These ones are ones you have to bid on. People are clearly not gonna sell them for these prices. The floor is here, around 4.7, 4.8 ETH. And these are for the most proliferated ones of the collection, the baddest man on the planet. If you want one with a bit more rarity behind it, the 50 or 50 collections here, we're looking at around eight, nine, 10 Ethereum. So this just shows you how quickly this space can heat up how quickly things can be repriced when you have scarce assets and how much money you can actually make in just one week. It's absolutely mind-bending. Another thing to have your eye on here is Doodle Labs. Great things are in the works. Doodle Labs is dedicated to bringing brands and artists to the blockchain. I've subscribed and left my email information for these guys to let me know when this goes live. These guys are working in kind of conjunction with Artblocks. So Artblocks actually tweeted this. As we explore the possibilities of generative minting as an enterprise service, we are excited to work with Doodle Labs as one of the first brave companies to experiment with their tech. We will announce when we are ready to chat with more organizations, but stay tuned. So the generative art, the art that's produced via these algorithms, clearly art blocks have their own way of doing it and their own tech behind this. And it looks like Doodle Labs are gonna be the first ones to be trying this out. And the fact that this is being recognized by Artblocks does give a lot of kudos to this one. Kind of under the radar, around 3,000 followers right now, but well worth following. Turn on notifications and see when their first drop is, because if they're bringing out some really cool pieces and maybe you can't afford Artblocks right now, this could be like a derivative of that and might be one worth getting involved with. So Curio cards are going to be auctioned at Christie's on the 1st of October. So I do expect that these Curio cards will rise in value quite substantially up until this date. These are a set of NFT collectible cards that were created back in 2017. They all have various amounts of supply. Some are like 1,000 or 2,000 and then some of them are like just a few hundred. And of course those ones catch the biggest price tags. So Christie's will auction off the full collection of 30 cards, so a full set, which many collectors will be absolutely going wild for. And I think that if this does extremely well, like if this sells for millions of dollars, then it will just continue the boom in the Curio cards prices. So here we have the Mona Lisa Curio card, number eight, current price is 2.99 ETH or $10,000. So mark this one down on a piece of paper and we will see where this one is this time next month. But I imagine this around three ETH price floor will be considerably higher. And this was probably one of the lower risk plays you can make in the NFT space right now. And the floor in general for these, let's go on the buy it now is low to high, around 1.69 ETH for this guy here. Now by clicking this button here with the owners, you can see who owns how many. So we can see Meme Universe owns 75 of this particular card. So this is probably why the price hasn't gone up that much. When someone owns a lot of the supply, they're gonna be taking profits, just cashing out and kind of controlling the market from there. But over time, as this person relinquishes control over some of these, and we have a more fair distribution all around, the price will start to go up. And if people need to own one of these to complete the collection, you can imagine the diamond handed investors who can hold onto these for a long time will be able to command huge prices when say this one is the only one a dedicated investor needs to complete their full set. Now a 2018 collection Crypto Arte, this one has a floor price of 0.5 ETH and I think this one is one to watch and I think this one will go up considerably. So things to note with these ones, even though these were created in 2018, these were not all minted in 2018. They were like lost relics. People realized the mint wasn't fully completed. Let's jump in and start minting them now. So if you go down on the side here and you go to mint year, you can see they were minted in 2018 only 494, 2019, 873, 2020, just 10, and 2021 is when the bulk of them were minted. So if you do 2021, these will be the least expensive of the bunch. And then if you wanna buy 2018 ones, you can see the price is a lot higher at around 7.5 ETH. So clearly people are valuing the scarcity within the collection based on when they were minted. But again, if you just wanna go and grab the cheapest ones of this collection, the floor should rise in my opinion. It looks like it might have just popped up a little bit then. So it's just gone from 0.5 to 0.6 ETH. So it may be that we're having someone come in and sweep the floor here. Three, six, nine, 12, 
15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Sales takes it up to 0 0.7 ETH. And then if we just scroll down a bit, what takes it up to around one Ethereum? It looks like there's quite a lot for sale here. So to get this one to a price floor of about one Ethereum, a lot of these are gonna have to sell, but I think we get there eventually because people are just putting a lot of emphasis now on these older projects, the ones that have historical context, irrelevant if they've been minted recently or not. This was designed back in 2018. And of course, the NFT space was very, very young at that point. Now, I also wanna go over some art block stuff as well. This one is mind bending. Clearly, this is where like the actual arty individuals, the people who are real collectors are coming and buying. So you have your kind of profile picture niche here, but then you've also got the art block stuff, which is cranking out some incredible pieces. Now, if you just look at the cheapest ones, we'll do buy it now. And let's see if this is definitely filtered on low to high. These crypto blots were literally going for under one Ethereum, I think around a week to 10 days ago. And now they're up to 2.5 ETH as a floor price. If we just scroll through here, these 27 bit digitals are now 2.87 ETH. I bought some at one ETH around two weeks ago. And so these are marking up very quick. We hear that Alameda Group are buying up art blocks and this is just pushing up the price of everything within these collections. Then if you go to activity, we can see what's been selling recently and the different types of curated ones. So subscapes, for example, are now going in the region of like 60 Ethereum. I think these were around 10 ETH a couple of weeks ago. Chromie Squiggles now in the teens. These were under 10 ETH around one week ago. And so the buy hold on for dear life mentality is paying dividends for many investors. People are clearly selling them off now as they're making huge profits, but it leads you to think, where the heck is this all gonna go? How much are these gonna be worth in a month or two months time from now as more and more people get onboarded into the NFT sector? And as we've just heard of these two funds right now buying these pieces, how many more funds are gonna come in and start aping into these various NFT collections? So for me personally right now, I'm just thinking anything that I really like, my, my art blocks pieces or anything like the crypto arty ones that I've got historical context, I'm not looking to sell or flip any of these for at least a few months. I just wanna let this play out and see exactly where this all goes. Then with things like the profile pics and stuff that I've got, my Astro friends, my Lonely Aliens, those kind of things, maybe starting to flip a few of those pieces and using the funds to get into some of the new mints coming up. Then of course we have to cover this piece of news because it is absolutely phenomenal, the Mutant Ape Yacht Club. So Bored Apes brought out a new set called the Mutant Apes. Now there's a potential for 20,000 of these to be minted, 10,000 to existing holders of the Bored Apes. You, they airdropped you this serum and then you could use the serum to generate a new piece from your original ape. And then 10,000 went on sale in a Dutch auction directly on their site. So 20,000 just entered the supply, but this does not seem to have in any way diluted the price of the Bored Apes or the collection. If anything, it's made them more valuable, which is crazy and kind of flips on the head that inflationary token economics that we're used to in the altcoin space, as typically this would actually diminish the price, but it has done the opposite. Because in a way, what's happened here is that holders of these Bored Apes have just been able to generate or mint these new mutant apes, and these mutant apes are now worth a fortune themselves. So essentially, owning a Bored Ape gave you the right to mint one of these bad boys and these are then worth tens of thousands of dollars. So your ape is literally generating you a yield. So this was a serum airdrop. So it says Board Ape Yacht Club took a snapshot and then after an hour, it randomly airdropped 10,000 mutant serums to the ape holders. These came in three different vials, M1, M2, and M3. And as you can see from the Curtis ape here, M1 would change him like this, M2 would change him like that. And then it says no one knows what will happen when an ape is introduced to the M3 serum. So these serums were then trading on the secondary market as well. And in fact, one holder was offered 269 Ethereum or almost $800,000, $900,000 for a serum. How ridiculously crazy is all of this? And you've just got to remember that in crypto, you have a lot of people who are buying ETH 
back in 2013 who probably own tens of thousands of Ethereums, if not more. And their kind of like cost basis is so low that they're just aping into all these NFT things with huge size that most people would say, this is a stupid price. And it does seem like a stupid price, but a lot of people in this space are crazy, crazy rich. So whatever price you think is ridiculous, there's probably someone willing to pay a little bit more. So the Dutch auction sold off 10,000 mutants at a starting price of three ETH. And of course, it didn't actually drop in value because these sold out pretty much straight away. And this generated $90 million in sales within that one hour. So the Board Ape Yacht Club team now have $90 million worth of funds to play with. And so for any normal brand, that is a huge amount of cash. They can go and spend this on just a wide variety of things to further enhance the brand reputation, get even more recognition, and generate further IP for the holders of the apes. So this is the current floor mutant ape. He is 6 ETH or roughly $20,000. So essentially the worst case scenario, you were just airdropped 20K by holding a bored ape. Then if you remember, they also released the Board Ape Kennel Club a couple months back. This is the floor Board Ape Kennel Club now, 4.8 ETH, so another 15K. So at a minimum, around $36,000 worth of NFTs have been airdropped to Board Ape Yacht Club holders. So I think in general, this one just serves to show everyone what is possible with the NFT space when done right. And even though we probably kick ourselves that we didn't ape into these in a massive way when we first heard about them, but there will be more things to come like this. Maybe not as successful as Bored Apes, but there will be more art, more artists, more NFT collections that are gonna come and do exceptionally well. So you need to have your eye on this market segment because the amount of money that can be generated can be very life-changing in a very short period of time. So that is my rundown of this week's NFT Tuesday, going through all the news, things I'm interested in, and more. I hope you enjoyed the content in today's video. I might do a top five NFT product projects under one ETH. If you'd like to see that, drop me a comment down below just so I know that that is the kind of thing you guys want to see. But until next time, folks, I shall see you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe and all of that good stuff and check out my Patreon link down below. Goodbye.